Hi everyone, this is Dan from Headmania and today we have a very special review. It's something that I've been looking forward to listen to and actually to test appropriately in my audiophile cave for a really long time. And uh, t today is the day where I can actually publish the review. I really I, I managed to get my hands on the desired product and I'm talking about a headphone amplifier, one of uh, the, the headphone amplifiers that I was I was really keen to listen to and it's uh, I'm talking about uh, Holo Bliss KTE the upgraded version so basically this is the amplifier this is the Kitsune the KTE version upgraded with better components inside you can see here that basically it has the, a few very handy connections in front uh, the balanced uh, the, the four, four balanced the 6.3 single ended and the uh, XLR balanced and it's also a pre-amplifier uh, <coughs> it also has a remote which comes in very handy um, and it looks amazing uh, but I'm, we're gonna talk ab about sound shortly by the way please don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the like button this will motivate me to write more reviews and bring more content to you uh, as you know this is my hobby that this is not my main job not at all uh, but i love sharing content love sharing my opinions with you and if you enjoy it and you want me to write or uh, create more content please subscribe uh, to the channel and hit the like button below um, <coughs> so here we are at last this is actually the uh, uh, well, the first time I managed to actually listen to Holo Bliss, uh, and actually it was the whole stack with May as deck. It was um, at the Munchen High End show, uh, and you will you can see this in the review. Um, you can check my initial impressions of the stack there, and it really got my attention. And I listened to a lot of headphones on that stack and I kept coming back to that stack I tried different types of headphones and it really impressed me it was the first time when I, I listened to LCD 5 and I liked them quite a lot the first time I thought that they kind of sh sounded shouty the bass was too low in terms of with the other parts of the frequencies but with this it really managed to get the best out of the LCD 5 it became engaging it became really nice to listen so basically that was my first experience in München uh, and I was looking forward to to, <laughs> to actually listen to this at home um, the Sandu from soundnews.net was the the one that managed to get this loaner from Magna Hi-Fi and fortunately I managed to uh, to get my hands on them on it as well and I thank both Sandu and Magna Hi-Fi for the loaner unit um, so we have a lot to talk about, however, keep in mind the fact that most of the details and um, um, you, most of the details and the, an in-depth review will be found in the description of the video uh, in its written article on headmania.org. Please read that as well because um, it has more details that I will be re uh, giving in this video because I, I want to keep this a bit shorter than the written article. So, first of all, <coughs> Um, it is a uh, uh, it is a very versatile amplifier, and I actually tested it with a lot of headphones. And some of them you can see uh, right behind me. This is the HE1000 SC from a Hi-Fi Man. Uh, this is actually the Susvara uh, from Hi-Fi Man as well. Uh, this was a loaner from uh, Sandu uh, as well. And um, <coughs> of course, uh, one of my favorite headphones here is the Meze Elite. Uh, besides these headphones, I also tested with. Uh, I, besides this headphone, I also tested with Zenheider, Sennheiser HD 650. Um, I also tested with IMs like uh, Jerry Harvey JH 13V2 Pro uh, or uh, um, and the uh, S2 12 Pro from Let's War. I, I think I <laughs> I did not get that name correctly, but you will find that it was in. Uh, in um, uh, in the review um, and um, also with Bayer Dynamics DT880 the 600 ohm version so I can say that it sounded amazing with m almost all of them it really sounded it, it gave life to the headphone to the music with those headphones um, and 
it is versatile because it is one of the few amplifiers that I, whatever I threw at him, with one exception, it sounded absolutely superb. Um, and you will see that this has uh, three types of outputs um, in, in, in terms of selecting the type of output. You will have the low impedance for headphones, you will have the high impedance for headphones, and of course the pre-amplifier line out. Um, and um, for planners, of course, I used the low impedance, but when switching to Zenheiser HD 16, uh, 650, I switched to high impedance, of course for biodynamics as well. Um, and let me say something. I mean, the, I, the Sennheisers, the C150, are still I still own it. Why? Because they tend to surprise me from time to time. Uh, of course, these are in a different league behind me. But those Sennheisers scaled enormously on this amplifier. It was the best I've ever listened to the uh, HD 650 like ever. So. Uh, when I set to the uh, high pedals mode, which brought more depth, more uh, especially in the bass, sec ba bass section, brought more uh, better mid range purity, uh, it, uh, it expanded the sound stage, and basically, <clears throat> overall, I got a better sound experience and more natural presentation and more engaging presentation for the high impedance headphones. And I also tested the DT880, which is like a monster and, uh, because it has, it has 600 ohms. And very few amplifiers managed to actually <laughs> uh, drive those uh, headphones. And they, one of the few that also managed to drive them was Ferrum Ore. The other one was uh, actually the, uh, the Bass Labs AP HPA1. And it's two types of driving. I mean, one, in the, one is to get the volume, and none actually in that regard is also kind of hard to get them up in volume. But Another thing is to have the proper dynamics, the natural tonality, uh, engagement and everything and uh, this was also available, it, it managed to get that out, out of the DT880. I would have liked a bit of more headroom in the this bare dynamics but uh, of course it was kind of, a, it was on the single ended output which has less power than the uh, than the balanced outputs, and I'm sure that if I can mod them and if I put it on the XLR, I will get the best out of those headphones. Um, so <coughs> uh, I also tested with IMs, and it was impressive. No noise whatsoever. No, it was purity, but clean. It adapted to the IMs as well. They sounded absolutely superb. It was the best I've heard those IMs actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> because I cannot put it in my backpack and go with my hands and listen to, to headphones, uh, whatever, whatever I want. Um, but um, yeah, uh, so from this perspective, it's a really, really versatile amplifier. So um, uh, let's go to uh, another thing that I like about it. It's uh, the, the, the basically the build quality uh, is amazing. It is very well built. I think that um, uh, it also looks nice. It's simple, but I enjoy that. It actually looks, it has the exact same dimension with my Rogna Wavelight uh, deck. And <laughs> it's kind of a universe trying to tell me something um, because I really enjoy it. Um, and um, it also has this remote that I showed you. And this is a, for a pre amplifier. From my perspective, this is an absolute must. If you want to use it in your system, in, the, in, a, in a speaker system, and I tested this in my speaker system, you absolutely need this. Right? You cannot just go on the uh, uh, couch, on the set one system, and go back forth, back and forth, whatever you want to volume up and down. Because you'll be, the music has different dynamic ranges, and you'll want to adjust. So, this is a heads up for anybody who makes an amplifier without a remote. It's not cool, man. It's not cool at all. <laughs> and this is cool, right? The, actually, the remote is quite, uh, quite look, good looking. It's also metal, uh, so that's another plus. Um, so let's get to the sound and I'm gonna get uh, a bit of, uh, on how it went with all of the testing in terms of what I tested with but I'm gonna oh, first of all I'm gonna talk about general characteristics that I managed to uh, get out of the most most of the, the testing and headphones uh, so what is the main thing that pops into your mind when you listen for the first time to this amplifier for me, it was the um, uh, purity. It was like sounds were created out of incredible black background. 
they appeared out of nowhere. Um, this also includes the fact that uh, purity basically uh, creates a very natural tonality. It doesn't add any type of harshness. It's pure. It's, it's like very natural from the purity perspective and also creates a very uh, uh, organic and natural experience in general uh, because no harshness is added, there's no, no digital harshness at all um, and basically it's only you and the music, it removes anything from it so it's only you and the music, this is the first thing that popped into my mind so from this perspective the transparency, the purity is like uh, it's the contrast it gives to the music because the black is actual black, it's like having an OLED right? And the black is black. It's the the contrast is infinite because um, you get from the black you get different type when you have a color you get many types of more nuances on the same co color. So this is exactly what it happens here because you have this purity, this high contrast. You will get much more detail from each and every note. Um, then the second thing was the the, the characteristic uh, which is basically uh, the dynamics and. Um, uh, the dynamics of this amplifier, uh, every note comes to life, it's like a sparkle that uh, has a really uh, good attack, a very detailed decay and very controlled sound signature, the imaging is perfect um, and, uh, uh, and the sound stage, the sound stage is absolutely superb for a uh, solid state headphone amplifier. This is in the top of my experience from, from this perspective. It, it envelops you, basically the music, it's all around you. You can concentrate on different layers, you can pick an instrument, you can bring it up to you and concentrate on it. You will get the, the, the most, one of the most immersive experiences you can get on a balanced, on a balanced uh, or a solid state headphone amplifier. So this is amazing here. Um, it also um, the details on this amplifier, I would say that, well, it's not details, right? If you talk about details, it's kind of a, well, it's beyond, below this amplifier. This is so well implemented that it's beyond de talking about details. It's talking about realism because everything put together, it sounds real, right? You have, it's like the instrument is right there with you. It's so clean, it's so pure, it's so alive. It's like there, right? So, it has everything, including details, but it's more than details. It's like listening to the actual thing right there. Uh, <laughs> or better, with a zoom lens, sometimes. <coughs> because you have the microphone here, there, the instrument. So, uh, yeah, uh, besides this, let's go to the bass section. The bass section is absolutely mesmerizing, it's addictive, you'll come back for more. <laughs> because it has an incredible tech, it has an incredible control, um, and overall, it, it has also very good depth. So, overall, I would say that it's a really engaging experience. It moves the air from your ears. It, if you feel the movement of the air, you get excited. You will get the most out of this. This is the, one of the best basses I've ever heard in headphone amplifiers, period. Um, <clears throat> then go to the mid-range. The mid-range is absolutely uh, amazing because it's pure. Uh, it's full and rich of detail without having to, without shoving something in your face. Um, it's, it's, uh, you will feel the breath of the vocals. Uh, you'll feel like the vocals from the singers actually come out of your own chest or your own throat. Um, you will, the, the, the vocal will envelope you and transport you to the music you want to listen to. Um, and also, like um, uh, the, the instruments that you, uh, the, how do you call it, the wind instruments, the ones that you have to actually blow into so you can get the sound out of, like trumpets, like saxophones, like um, uh, flutes, uh, basically you hear that breath, you hear how the sound is created, it, and that breath feels like comes out of here from your own throat, that's something that very few manage audio components in general managed to, to create and this is something I'm looking for in all of the all of the tests that I'm doing uh, and this is doing it incredibly well um, so let's go to the treble the treble is uh, a, 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 a maintains this characteristic of uh, good uh, clean and detail it's, it's 
it's sparkling, it's, it's kind of a tactile treble of <laughs> some, some, some sorts, but without being harsh. This is, uh, it's not, it's kind of one of the neutral side, it's not harsh, it doesn't add any digital harshness to it, not whatsoever. It blends amazingly well with the other uh, parts of the frequencies that I just talked about. Um, well, I, I, I think I talked about the dynamics, but um, again I want to punctuate, uh, punctuate that the, the, the transients are amazing, the attack is really good, the microdynamics, the macrodynamics, everything is good, you can hear Every f instrument has life. Even if you hear the instrument in the back of the orchestra, it still has life, right? And the dynamic range is explosive. Uh, it goes from really low to uh, really high in a surprisingly, uh, in a surprising and explosive manner. Really well done. Um, so, I don't think I missed anything. You'll get more details in the review. Please don't forget to read the read an article. Uh, Let's talk a bit about um, the, how I did the test. So basically, as I mentioned, all of the most of the headphones sounded absolutely superb. Um, it brought life into the music with mostly all of them, and I'm, I'm going to explain why mostly. Um, basically, it sounded great with high impedance headphones like Zenheiser 650. Biodynamic DT880 with 600 ohms. Um, it sounded amazing with all most of the planners, um, uh, like Mesa Elite, Hyperman HM100 SC. Uh, it also sounds amazing with IMs. Basically, it's a really versatile amplifier. Whatever you put into it, it brings them to life. Um, now, uh, when it comes to Susvara, which these headphones are quite hard to um, drive. I wouldn't, I mean, it's not on the same level with the others. It doesn't bring them to life as much as the, with, it does with the others. It's a good pairing, but it's not amazing. I'm going to tell you why. I feel that, uh, yeah, you know, that when I first listened to Susvara, I actually listened from my head, my, my speaker amplifier, the Benchmark AHB2. It was not actually enough with that amplifier as well. I didn't get enough, uh, it was kind of stereo. The bass did not, uh, uh, was not brought to life. Uh, I didn't have enough depth, not slam, um, the vocals were kind of not natural um, and I would say that uh, I, I, was, I was missing something there. Um, from this perspective, this uh, amplifier, the Bliss Solo, uh, actually is better than one HB2 because it brings more natural sounding uh, more, more uh, into the mix. So it has a better depth in the bass it has a better hologra holography around and the sound stage is bigger, uh, better vocals, but it's still not um, the best I've listened to. I still feel that the headroom is kind of maxing out the amplifier. <laughs> um, I would have liked a bit more headroom with the Susvaras um, and um, uh, a bit more energy, right? Um, however, it's a good pairing. It is better than one HB1, if you, uh, HB2, if you ask me. If when I added two HB2, it was a clear difference there. Um, so again, it's a good pairing. I would have liked better. It's not the best I've ever heard. Two HB2s are considerably better, and also uh, Triformatic, for example, Primavera was also better, and also even Ferrum was better from a headroom perspective and the slam perspective even if it was not as clear uh, and pure uh, as uh, the Bliss. Um, so, let's go to the next type of testing that I've done with. As I mentioned, this is a pre-amplifier as well, and I actually needed one. Um, and I tested in my both my speaker system, which was powered by the Benchmark HB2 as well, and my speakers are Martin Logan ESL um, 11A, the impressions from Martin Logan. So that's an electrostatic pa panel with a subwoofer base. So basically, I'll, after 300 Hz, it has an uh, electrostatic panel, and uh, below 300 Hz, it has a subwoofer. So, first of all, I started by testing this as a pre, pre with HB2 with Susvaras. And it fixed most of the things that I had with the HB2 with Susvaras. So it infused some of the things that makes Bliss amazing into the HB2 with Susvaras. 
So I did get that headroom. I get I did get more energy and uh, uh, and uh, overall a better sound stage, a bit more natural sound. It didn't sound sterile, um, and uh, the 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 general uh, general sound was improved with Svarans. Um, it still is not not as natural sounding uh, with uh, than with Bliss, but still I think I prefer the Svaras with Bliss and HB2, but Bliss is a pre. <laughs> um, I, now I wonder what the, uh, the Bliss could do with two HB2s. I, I listened to two HB2s with Svara, they were amazing, but I didn't have a pre. It was directly from the deck. I think it would improve this even further. So, I might get to that at one point. <laughs> um, so, it managed, managed to get the best out of the, the, uh, the best things uh, from the Bliss transferred into the sound from HB2. Things like uh, purity, uh, natural tonality, sound stage, uh, slam. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it. And then I tested it with the speakers. And it does even, uh, I got impressed even at a higher level. Because uh, in this case, with the speakers, I would say that um, um, it, it managed to do the kind of the same things that we did with Susvara, but at a bigger level. So it really improved the sound with the speakers. Um, it, I got a fantastic vocals. Um, I, I got uh, better timing, better the, the notes were a bit. Um, I mean, the transition on HB2 is kind of a raw monster. It does a transition like it's really raw. This creates a more rounded note, right? And keeping the speed and the impact and everything you need. But it's a more rounded, transient, a more rounded note in general for each each musical load. So uh, I get better bass depth. I got better uh, vocals. I got better sound stage and holography, uh, even in the speakers, uh, which are also amazing from the beginning. But Definitely a better death in the sound stage um, and uh, overall a better natural and uh, pure experience. So that's basically how I tested this. And uh, uh, some people will probably ask me how it sounded with the Pass Labs HPA1 because I recently reviewed that and I love that as well, uh, especially with Meze Elite. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about both of them and uh, I will start with both are amazing. <laughs> uh, it might be a preference uh, situation uh, because um, uh, they, they do, I mean, some things they achieve but in different type of, uh, from, uh, in different ways. So they achieve, the, for example, a natural presentation but from different perspectives, from in a different approach. So I would, let's say if we go start with the HPA1, it's uh, a more organic experience. Um, you have uh, uh, closer vocals. You have more rugged vocals. Uh, you get you get the textures that are closer to you, and basically you can kind of touch the textures. Uh, <laughs> it kind of has uh, the characteristics and brings some characteristics of high-end tube amplifiers, which is amazing, right? Um, so. From the Bliss perspective, they, ach they achieve natural, a natural presentation, but from a, uh, implementing it from a different perspective. So it sounds natural because how pure it is. It doesn't add anything. It's more of a more neutral than than uh, than with HPA one from Past Labs, um, and um, it's more neutral and it's basically it's really really pure, clean. Um, and the black, the background is in amazingly black. It's like OLED, as I told you. Uh, and uh, um, everything just is there. The music is pure. It's just you and the music. Um, and this is the way it managed to, to achieve that. It's also a bit, a, a bit, uh, has a bit better speed um, and uh, micro dynamics, let's say. Um, however, let's say for example, HPA one. Was the be I, I, I kind of ended by preferring a little with the HPA one because it it improved the strength of the headphones, like vocals, textures, by bass presence, uh, sound stage. Um, uh, even the sound stage with the HPA one, by the way, was both are amazing in the sound stage uh, the department. 
absolutely amazing. This is top tier in solid state amplifiers. With HP1, was a bit deeper, a bit deeper. <laughs> uh, uh, with, but amazing with Bliss as well. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, uh, with, for example, with Bli uh, even if I preferred Elite overall with HP1, it was also amazing with Bliss. Um, and, for example, with Bliss, I preferred more the HE1000 AC because it played on the strengths of the headphone, like speed, clarity, um, um, uh, impact, um, and um, uh, microdynamics. So, in terms of connectivity, this wins, because it's a, head a balanced headphone amplifier, uh, it has a lot of, uh, it has the different type of inputs, including single and balanced, uh, but it also has the uh, balanced. So, uh, for example, the HP1 I couldn't have used with Benchmark because it, uh, Benchmark is only balanced. Only balanced. So, you know, from a connectivity perspective, Bliss wins. Also, it has more outputs in the front. Uh, you have the 4.4 balanced, you have the single-ended 6.3, uh, and you also have the, four, uh, the XLR. So, basically, it's more versatile from this perspective. Uh, it, uh, and also because it has the high impedance mode, uh, it's kind of uh, more versatile in general. Um, uh, I would say that um, because of this, you will probably get more uh, more types of headphones will sound better on on Bliss. So versatility, Bliss wins, and also, but in the sound perspective, it's kind of a direction in terms of what you prefer, right? Uh, both are really good, um, and um, it, that's kind of it for the for the comparison let's say <laughs> um, but um, uh, in the end both go to the top of my recommendations list and uh, depending on your level of preference and, and by the way the connectivity you need um, uh, you will uh, you'll probably have to think about it uh, and choose your own deck and by the way this is more powerful <laughs> than uh, the HP one so uh, this is it for the review do not forget to check out the article because it has more details um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel and like this video so thank you for watching and see you in the next one